Same wind there as it comes down the downwind. Very stable in the hover. Both directions very nicely. We're coming to the hover, going to the next head speed. Um, adding 100 RPM, 200 RPM to the head speed, and the helicopter is less floppy now. Seems to like that head speed a little bit better than the one before. Nice and steady. No saving issues at all on the four blade head. Not doing anything weird as I try to cyclic control it. RPM. And that's tightened up the helicopter even more. Nice and responsive. Okay, now we've just completed a very successful test flight. They don't normally go that well on first flights. The, the model is perfectly trimmed. It's flying beautifully. It will, once it's in the fuselage, require another trim flight, but it's absolutely fine. Um, one of the main things we're looking for with, with, with the helicopter was to make sure the tracking on the blades was fine and the phasing of the multi-blade head so that when we put a cyclic control in 
there's no weird movements in the helicopter when we put a roll it's not trying to fly forward bits like that um, the tail was holding fine so we've not made need to make any adjustments on the fly bar unit in the gyro okay um, you may have noticed during the flight it was talking about head speeds we started off at 1200 rpm and um, the, the model took off beautifully it was very nice to fly at 1200 rpm um, relatively loose which is quite a nice style for scale flying you don't want the model too locked in uh, as we increased the head speed we went from 1200 to 1400 and the model became more stable and more solid in the hover and more dialed in and then finally we increased up to 1600 rpm on the head speed and it became even more solid in locked in and more responsive on the controls so you tune the model to how you like it to fly and that's how I like it to fly now you notice that we're talking sub 2000 rpm head speeds okay with a 450 model uh, a lot of people out there say oh you've got it with a 450 you must have high head speeds that is a complete lie okay we're using a multi-blade head which means we've got twice as much lift because we've got more blades okay which means for the half of the head speed we're generating the same lift as a two blade head okay so you don't need to have the high head speeds right so we took off at uh, 1200 rpm on the head speed and the model flew quite nicely there was no issues with tail wag no issues at all with tail hold so the model in with the extra torque from the four blade head was still holding quite nicely at 1200 rpm and um, it was a little loose in the control which you know it's still locked in and still fine but it's loose so it's not as um, twitchy as flying with a high head speed okay so then we flipped it up to 1400 rpm it became more stable in the hover more locked in but more more responsive on the controls and then again we increased head speed to 1600 rpm and it became even more stable in the hover and even more responsive on the controls you dial in the head speeds and stuff and your control response to how you like it okay it's your model you put your own settings in okay we've got this model flying exactly how i like to fly which is good and we're just going to talk about head speeds um, you'll notice we've got a four blade head on this model okay which means that we don't need to run high head speeds okay sub 2000 rpm with a multi-blade head on a 450 is brilliant okay if we you remember we've got twice as many blades than a standard 450 which means that we if we spin at the same rate we're generating twice as much lift but also the faster you spin a multi-blade head the less lift you can produce so by slowing the head speed down we're allowing smoother air for the blade that's following behind and you get much much nicer much nicer sound from the model it's not screaming you'll get longer flight times and you can have even more fun so this model is now ready to be taken back to the workshop where we will start stripping it down to fit into the fuselage. And that will be in the next videos.